This is 92.5 Fox News. It was all a dream, eh, Trey Radel? Uh, your host of The Drive. Good to be with you. This is 92.5 Fox News, 537 here in beautiful, sunny southwest Florida. Occupational licensing laws. <laughs> Have I put you to sleep yet? Uh, the reality is that these laws throughout the United States are at times nothing short of ridiculous. You have to pay exorbitant fees and take long ass hours of school just so you can get a license to do anything from uh, apply makeup to even being a timekeeper in boxing. Now, before we get to our next interview on this issue here, what we're about to listen to is the latest episode of Cops Shot. Live, on location here in Florida, though this is COPS, the hot new occupational licensing spinoff. My name's Radel, Officer Radel. I'm with the Occupational Licensing Police, out here doing dangerous work for the people, making sure that everybody, everybody, pays their fees and gets their hours in. Looking for people using dangerous things like scissors to cut hair. God forbid they apply makeup or nail polish. If you don't have that license, I'm coming for you. Officer Radel, we have a problem. We have a boxing timekeeper without a license. Need your response. Yeah, you heard that right. You want to ding a bell in boxing? You better pay your motherfucking fees and get those hours in. All right, let's go get them, boys. Joining us now on this segment, in an intro she's never had before, I would guess, Shoshana Weissman. She's a digital media director for the R Street Institute uh, and does work on exactly this. She can also find her work in the Wall Street Journal, National Review, Weekly Standard. R Street's motto is free market and real solutions. Shoshana, if you could give us some examples of some of the ridiculousness you found here in Florida. Well, thanks for having me, and that's sure. definitely the best intro I've ever had. Um, I don't think anyone's going to be able to live up to that uh, going forward. But, yeah, I mean, like, so Florida licenses nutritionists, and, I mean, I guess it, it, in some ways people could be like, oh, that's reasonable. But think about it this way. If you give nutritional advice to someone like, hey, don't drink that soda, that's probably bad for you, it's cool as long as they don't pay you for it, because apparently the exchange of money is what makes that dangerous. So that's licensed um, nail pol- people applying nail polish. The the boxing announcers, I like have no idea how that happened, and that's all in in the state of Florida. When we look at these, one of the things that I, I'm a firm believer in, uh, having been in politics or just a political animal for a long time, is that when when you look at Republican or Democrat, it's not really red or blue. Uh, it's about green, that these local, state, and quite honestly, federal lawmakers just want the money. When we see these fees being charged of people, of somebody who literally wants to apply nail polish, where they've got to go to school and pay these fees, in the big picture, whether you're Republican or Democrat, doesn't this really just hurt the poor? Yeah, that's exactly it. And that's the problem with with this issue. Because when people hear occupational licensing reform, like their eyes glaze over. But when you look at what it is, it's not just doctors and nurses. Like, yeah, we should, of course, license those. But do we really need to license florists? Louisiana does. People who arrange flowers because of the dangers of unlicensed floristry. Or boxing announcers, like, that's just talking. Like, if they do a bad job, the fans will be mad, but no one's hurt. Um, and it, it hurts. So it hurts everyone because, first, the people can't get jobs unless they pay tons of money to government boards. And um, and then there's a shortage of people in the industry. So the people who want to hire them, they're going to cost more so they can't afford it. it. I mean, it always hurts the people with the least money. When we look at some of the cosmetology issues, I I know that I've had calls here when I've talked about these types of reforms in the past. that They're like, well, we're dealing with chemicals and people's scalps and you want to make sure that people are trained. In some of the work that you've done at R Street and some of the things that you push, even just to educate people on with these reforms, it's not about chemicals. Is that correct? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Like right now in Arizona, they're trying to remove licenses for people who blow dry hair. Like literally just putting a blow dryer to your hair requires 
hundreds of hours of, of training that has nothing to do with hair blow drying because it's so dangerous. And you should hear the excuses they were using. Um, they were saying that if you use a hair iron, um, maybe you could burn someone's eye. But when, when you listen long enough, and I, I like, I can't believe they're even saying this, but I think one woman hit the nail on the head. She said, you know, if we don't license hair blow dryers, then immigrants are going to come here and take our jobs without licenses. It's not about safety. I mean, some people might really think what it a is. red herring, by the way. Let's just blame everything on illegal immigrants. <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. So everything's immigrants. Everything's their problem. It has nothing taking to do with jobs! <laughs> she, yeah, she, um, she was a manicurist, and she was saying that when they removed licensing for that in Arizona, that immigrants took her job. Well, let, let's, let's go again real quick, though, Shoshana, get to that, though. I mean, with people taking their jobs, that's the... The, the tough part, this is something that people really need to understand when they see somebody who's like, listen, I paid all this money. I went to these hours. That is the component that is detrimental for people who want to make a dollar, for people who want to pay rent, put food on their kids' plate, and be able to one day maybe even buy a home. They can't do that if they're living in poverty and they want to get out of that poverty. They cannot break that cycle if the state is inhibiting them by charging them all this money. It breaks our heart. You hear stories like this all the time. I think one of my favorite examples, because it's so demonstrative, was in Louisiana. A woman, her, her husband passed away. She never had to pay for herself before. So she all she knew was floristry. She went to work as a florist, and she didn't know she had to have a license. So they, they made the grocery store where she was working fire her, and she died alone and in poverty because she couldn't. She, she had to have a license to be a florist. And, you know, when you think about this, you have to remember, it's not just making things better or safer with a license, regardless of whether it even does that. When you say you need a license, a government license, before you're allowed to do this, you have to be willing to say it's better for you to have no job at all and to be poor than to be able to do this. And for doctors, I get that. Of course we want safety there. But floristry, you know, haircuts, these are all things that we license. Hair braiding is something we license. What moms do for their daughter. That is nuts. Uh, Get on the line with us right now, Shoshana Weissman. Uh, She's with R Street. Uh, R Street's motto, free markets, real solutions. They advocate for workable free market solutions, work with elected leaders of both parties, uh, and they covered all criminal justice, economic freedom, telecom policy, you name it. Rstreet.org is the website to go to. Rstreet.org. Um, let me let me wrap up uh, with coming back to Florida now. You had just begun to touch on that one example of a, of a woman who had been giving diet advice in California. She moves to Florida uh, with her military husband as they get transferred here. What what happens to her and how does that play out? So there's a really big problem. When you move from state to state, you are um, you have to get re-licensed in whatever profession you're in. And if you think about it, military spouses are moving with their, their husbands or their wives all the time. She started her business in California where you don't need a license to give diet advice. She built a really successful business. Then she came to Florida where they do license it. She had to pay a $750 fine. Um, she, uh, she had been operating for two years. No one complained until um, a licensed dietitian complained. And now she can't operate anymore. So the Institute for Justice, which is a public interest law firm, is fighting for her. But she was doing everything right, everything safe, and and they just stopped her from making a living while her husband's fighting for the country. That's just so wrong. What about the issue of, uh, last question here, the issue of portability? Is that something that is a possibility throughout the United States? Reciprocity, if you will? Definitely. Um, Well, in her case, it's a really big issue because even if there is portability in Florida, it wouldn't help her because she didn't have a license to begin with. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why it's important to, like, not license things that shouldn't be licensed to begin with. But for stuff like doctors and nurses, it's also important to try to make sure that their their licenses can transfer across state lines so they don't lose their job just because they move to another state. There you have it. Uh, very well put. And uh, I mean, it's interesting. Look, and this is something that I think, quite frankly, if we've got liberals or conservatives listening right now, well, our, our audience may be overwhelmingly conservative uh, and will believe in free markets. I think that liberals, especially classic liberals, look at this, too. Uh, and not only look at it from a policy standpoint, but the but even the emotional standpoint of seeing people, uh, people who may not have a lot of money, people who are living in poverty, trying to break free from that poverty. 
uh, and quite frankly, Republicans and Democrats, it's at the state level, local levels, preventing them from getting work. Uh, Shoshana Weissman with the R Street Institute. rstreet.org is where you can go. But I would highly recommend following her on Twitter, at Senator Shoshana uh, on Twitter. Uh, Sloth Committee Chair, that's a conversation we'll have another time. Shoshana, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Again, rstreet.org is where you can go to uh, for that. We'll take some calls coming up here. Some calls. 